Hey guys, welcome back to another video here. My name is Ryan. Today we're talking about how we optimize and select the KV value for a brushless electric motor. Now the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna cover the process that we use in order to get the KV value. Then we're gonna talk about a few examples. The first two examples are gonna be relatively straightforward and the third one is gonna be a little more challenging. I'll go over and explain why it's a little bit challenging when we get to that point. So let's talk about our process and start there. One thing that I do want to mention prior to getting into that is exactly what were the goal and intention of this video is. The goal for this video is to cover KV. We're not going to be talking about the size of the brushless motor. That is also a critical component to consider when selecting your brushless motor. So let's go ahead and talk about that process. We need to understand the exact application. What are you intending to use this brushless motor in? Is it going to be a radio controlled car, boat, airplane, helicopter, that sort of thing? And we need to know specifically what you're looking at. Is it a 110 scale car? Is it a 18 scale buggy? Once we know that, we also need to know the cells and series that you plan to run. For example, we know that a lithium polymer battery has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts per cell. If we plan to run a 4S LiPo battery, so that's four cells in series within our battery, we are going to get a nominal voltage of 14.8, 6 cell, 22.2, and so on. That's what the first two components that we need to get a good understanding are. The next part of the process is we have to know the specific range of RPM, and this is going to be an unloaded RPM that we require for our application. We can find this out by researching it on the internet. We can look up exactly what people are saying, the RPM range that we need to fall in within our specific application. For example, if you're running a radio control car, there is a specific range that, of RPM that you'll want to be in. However, if you look at a radio controlled helicopter, you may find a completely different range of RPM. Same with a drone, you may find a completely different RPM range if you're operating a drone that is for performance versus operating a drone that carries a camera and is just carrying the camera around. So let's go ahead and jump into our first example. Our first example is going to be a 1/8 scale buggy or truggy um, that we're going to run. Now the next thing that we need to know is our RPM range. We go ahead, we find out and determine what this is based off of what we find on the internet and we realize that we're looking for an RPM range of 35,000 to about 50,000 RPM. That range, we have to select a specific RPM within that range. Now there's different reasons why we would be a little bit higher or lower on our RPM range. If we're looking for speed, we want to more than likely be a little bit higher within our RPM range. It'll be easier to extract speed and power out of a higher RPM for our radio control buggy application. Same thing when we get into our next example. However, in this first example, we're gonna go ahead and select an RPM of 50,000 unloaded. So there we have it, we have the 50,000 RPM, then we want to understand what kind of battery we're gonna to use to power this buggy. We're gonna go ahead and select a six cell lithium polymer battery pack. Now we can go ahead and do the math from our 50,000 RPM, our 22.2 volt nominal for the six cell lithium polymer battery pack and arrive at a KV value. When we do the math, we get a KV value of about 2250 KV. That is sort of the intended KV that we wish to run within our application. This may leave us with many options for our KV value. Now when we go looking for that specific KV, we don't need to find an exact match. We're not looking for 2250. A 2200 would also suit. We're gonna be within our range, that is going to be okay. Let's take a look at example two. What we need to know is exactly what our application is. This one is going to be a, an electric brushless trainer style airplane. This is typically with the wing on the top, a high wing trainer style airplane. Our RPM range when we go and find out what is the most optimal range for this style airplane is going to be 10,000 RPM to around the 14,000 RPM mark. We can go ahead and say that we wish to run 12,000. Now you'll want to go and run somewhere closer to the 14,000 if you're looking to go with a faster sort of setup. A faster setup may require a reduced load. Our load in this case for an airplane is going to be the propeller. More RPM, we're going to have to size our propeller smaller. 
So we're able to play with the KV value and get a good understanding as to what our load is expected to be. Very similar to our first example where we were talking about the speed of optimization for our brushless car. Here it's going to be very similar as well. So we go ahead and also need to figure out what our battery pack that we intend to run within this application is going to be. We determine that the battery pack is going to need to be a four cell 14.8 volt nominal battery pack. Then we can go ahead and compute our KV value for this application. We run the numbers and it comes out to be 810 KV. That's gonna be 810 RPM per volt. The next thing that we need to do is go ahead and select our brushless motor. Now again here, you don't need to look for exactly 810. It could be something similar that's going to be close enough. You're never gonna find an exact perfect match and if you do, great, you can use that. Let's look at our third example. Now I did mention that this example is a little more difficult. Let's talk about why that is. Our third example is going to be, I have 3D printed an electric ducted fan. Now this fan unit is going to be requiring a brushless motor to power it. I know what the application is, I'm holding it. I know what kind of battery pack I want to run. It's going to be somewhere around 14.8. The next item that I need to determine is my RPM range. Well. Electric fans do have an RPM range. However, I don't know what this is going to be. There's nowhere on the internet that I'm gonna be able to find out, you know, Ryan's 3D printed fan, what kind of RPM range do I need for it? I'm not gonna be able to find that. So what do I do? Well, I need to compare it up against a similar fan. So I have another fan here, and I know that this fan is roughly the same size. Both of these are somewhere around 70 millimeters in size and have a very similar blade count. The next item that I need to understand is what kind of RPM range do I get out of the known fan. I know that this operates very well at 37,000 to 44,000 RPM unloaded. Uh, it also goes a little bit up above that as well. So then I can go ahead and select an RPM for this fan that I want to go and run. So what I do is I select 40,000 RPM. I know that I want to run a 4S LiPo battery pack and then I can compute the numbers to arrive at a KV value of 2700. Now I go ahead, purchase my 2700 KV or something close enough to it and then I go ahead, set up my system and run it. Now what I'm gonna be looking for in this sort of application is how much power I can actually develop with this fan unit. Typically EDFs, you'd be able to understand if an EDF is performing good based off of its thrust value. So I get a good reading as to what my thrust value is and then I can go ahead and adjust from there. Now the challenge is I don't have any gearing or any propeller sizes that I can go up or down. I can either redesign the fan, which is not going to be the same application, it's gonna be something different or I have to select a different motor. If this is fully optimized, this fan unit, it's got the best efficiencies and all that, I don't want to go and redesign this. I want to keep it as is. What I will end up doing instead is I will take my KV value and swap it for something different. If I want more power out of it, I'll go from 2700 KV to 28 or 29 or 3000. That's how I'm able to optimize it for the system. So you can see it's a little more challenging because you don't really have that gearing or propeller to change in order to optimize your system uh, as a whole. So you have to keep in mind that the correct optimization of your power system is really knowing all the different components of it and knowing that you can go ahead and find the correct gearing within your buggy to arrive at the correct wheel RPM, how fast the tires are gonna rotate on that car. You don't wanna go ahead Pick a motor that's gonna run at 40,000 RPM for your brushless car and end up with a speed of 300 miles an hour. You're probably not gonna get there and you're gonna blow up all the components within your brushless setup. So there you have it. That's how you're able to optimize the KV value for your brushless setup. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next one. Thank you for watching.